So at long last, we've come to the end of the final portion of, of our coverage of advanced Java concurrency and parallelism frameworks and asynchronous reactive programming frameworks. So I want to finish by kind of summarizing the pros and cons of completable futures. So there's definitely pros and cons. Um, one thing that's, that's good about completable futures is that you don't have to have any synchronization or threading. So you'll notice there's no threads being created anywhere. It's all hidden for you by the fact factory methods like supply async. There's no locking operations that are explicit in the code. Any locking that has to be done is actually done by the Java class libraries. So things that involve files, for example, that's done for you in the operating system. Things that protect you know, reading from uh, network interfaces and connections and so on, that's done for you automatically. So you can just worry about the logic in your code. So what we'll do here is we'll kind of compare and contrast the completable futures framework portion, which is this guy on the right here, on your right, to the parallel streams implementation. And just sort of glancing at them at a high level, you can see that they actually look kind of the same. So in this model, we have a stream of URLs. We filter out things that are uh, already cached. We download them synchronously in different threads. We apply the filters synchronously in different threads. And we collect the results into a list of filtered and downloaded and stored images. So that's what the parallel streams version does. The completable futures version is a little bit longer, but you can see the parallels. We, we asynchronously check if they're cached. We asynchronously download non-cached images. We asynchronously filter and store the images that have completed downloading. We collect the results to a future, and then we go ahead and, and wait for the results and log them. So I think you'll agree that um, you know, it's more or less the same thing, although the implementation of some of these behaviors is quite a bit different and more complex. <laughs> so there's, there is, in fact, a difference in terms of amount of code that you write and the level of complexity of the code that you write. Whereas this code is pretty simple. It's a bunch of synchronous calls that are partitioned up by the underlying fork join pool to handle the processing. I think it's quite, uh, hopefully it's, it's obvious, but you'd have to really write the code yourself to see how obvious it is that this code is simpler than that code. So even though they're about the same amount in terms of the number of elements in the stream, the number of stages in the pipeline, these guys are more complicated to write. They're more complicated to debug. They're more complicated to reason about. And part of the challenge here is we just don't think about asynchrony as well as we think about synchrony, although Java Completable Futures makes it a heck of a lot easier to do that. So there better darn well be a good reason why we're going to all this trouble, right? Why go to all this trouble to do asynchronous processing if it's not going to give you some kind of win? Because it's really not giving you a simplicity win. And as it turns out, there is a win. So as you can see here, the completable futures stuff is faster than the parallel stream stuff. And of course, all of that is way faster than sequential processing. No surprise there. But what's interesting is just you know, how much faster it is. So especially for the, the bigger images, the, the larger the image, the faster the code is with the completable futures. And there's a variety of reasons for that, chief of which is that asynchronous processing is typically implemented more efficiently in an operating system than synchronous processing, just the way that modern operating systems work as a rule. Um, completable futures are thus more efficient and scalable, but so the, the performance is good, but the productivity is not quite as good because they're just more work to have to do. Conversely, parallel streams are often much easier to program, but they'll be less efficient and less scalable. So you just have to decide what's right for you. Honestly, in many cases, Parallel streams are perfectly fine. If you just want sort of a, an n-fold speed up where it's not the fastest you can do, but it's better than a sequential program, parallel streams are simple because you just write a sequential code using the sequential stream, and then you change sequential streams to parallel streams, and boom, you get a speed up most of the time. So that's good. As we saw here, combining sequential streams and completable futures is often a win because we can get this cool sort of you know, pipeline-like effect while we're also handling things asynchronously. You will see that in assignment number four. But it's usually overkill to combine parallel streams with completable futures, because then you just have too much parallelism going on, and it, it probably isn't a win. 
It's like, uh, it's maybe hard to see this, but it's a, it's a van full of seat belts. And it says, overkill, why have one when you can have 200, right? So it doesn't actually give you a win to have hundreds of threads. That, that doesn't really make a win usually. It just makes things actually slow down. Java 9 fixes some limitations with completable futures. We already saw how Java 9 fixed some of the limitations with optional. It also fixes an interesting limitation with completable futures. One of the things that was very hard to do with Java 8 completable futures was time them out if they ran too long. So if a completable future took too long to run, it was hard to handle that without writing a lot of extra code. So they fixed this in Java 9, and here's an example that demonstrates this. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and asynchronously find the best price on a flight from London to New York City. And then we're going to, in parallel to that, we're going to go ahead and asynchronously find the current exchange rate of pounds to dollars. And when we find the price and we find the exchange rate, we're going to convert the price into pounds or dollars or whatever. But if this whole operation takes more than one second to run, we're going to time out and an exception will be thrown. So the or timeout is a new feature that was added in Java 9. So you can say, you know, let these guys run, but don't let them run for more than a second. And when they do, in fact, time out, then an exception will be raised and we can have a when complete call here, which if we have an exception, we'll print the exception. Otherwise, if there was no exception, we'll print out the price, which would be the amount in pounds. So that just kind of illustrates this cool new feature that was added in Java 9. You can read more about it here at this link down below. So it's, it's a nice, small little feature to make life ever so much better. OK, so that actually completes the discussion about completable futures, which will then also um, sort of lead us to the end of our discussion on all the different parallel processing mechanisms that we have in Java.